Hey everyone, welcome to another Sounds Profitable Deep Dive. I'm very excited because I'm here today with John Gibbons, the president and CPO of Libsyn, to talk a little bit more about Libsyn's plans this year and in the future. So John, welcome to the Deep Dive. Yeah, thanks so much, Brian. I'm excited to be here. Thanks for uh, thanks for having us. Yeah, I'm, I'm pumped too because it's very funny. Right before Sounds Profitable became a thing, me and you met at Podcast Movement Evolutions in 2020, I believe. And we were talking about ideas that eventually led to the start of Sounds Profitable. You were at a different company at that point and advising in the space. So to see you join in full force into podcasting and to see where we've been able to take Sounds Profitable, it's exciting to revisit all of that together. Yeah, it really is. No, it really, it feels like a, it feels like a wonderful come together after that. Uh, we certainly have been through a ton since then. Um, and that was sort of the last professional conversation that I had prior to the pandemic. So, um, so yeah, so it's wonderful to be a part of this and it's wonderful to sort of think about where we first started the conversation. So, um, yeah, it's great. Well, let's hear a little bit more about your background. I mean, you joined Libsyn in 2022 and mm -hmm. there's been a lot of movement since then, but what, what do we need to know about you and your career and what led you to this place? Yeah, no, thank you for asking. Um, well, I really have spent all of my career uh, really helping creators find audiences. Um, so I started my career uh, a long, long time ago in the 90s uh, with the Internet Movie Database. Um, and really, my role at the Internet Movie Database was, was effectively to make money. There were not titles at that time during, uh, you know, in technology. So um, I really focused on sort of three areas. So I really focused on search discovery and recommendations to really help audiences find the movies that they were looking for. Um, I really also focused on insights to help filmmakers continue to make movies. Um, and then I focused on digital advertising to help advertisers, um, uh, uh, you know, message to the audiences that they were looking for. Um, and to really support both that supply and demand of, of movies. So, um, that, that's really where that's really where my passion for this began. Um, I sort of fancy myself as an artist, but my art is really my ability and my drive to be able to create platforms to help creators, you know, make money and continue to make art. Um, I continued that uh, after about 13 years at IMDb. Uh, I started an attribution database um, for digital first content. So it was really, if you think of it as like an IMDb for YouTube, and it was the same thing, um, helping advertisers and helping creators. Um, uh, I was at a company called Adam Tickets that was backed by studios and cinema chains. Um, I was then the CEO of Pocket Cast for, uh, for a while. Um, and then I also did some time in ad tech, um, uh, which I uh, love you guys in ad tech. Um, and then of course, <laughs> now I'm, uh, of course, now I'm, I'm at Lipson. Um, I am the president, um, of Lipson, which means that I'm the head of the leadership team. Um, I ensure that our goals are defined and met. Um, I uh, uh, oversee the strategy, our business relationships. I communicate with shareholders. And then most importantly, I spend a lot of time on metrics to measure, you know, if in fact what we're doing is, is correct. Um, and then I also serve as the uh, chief product officer, um, which involves sort of everything that you can think about in terms of product, in terms of vision, execution, marketing, design, integration, um, sort of all of those really wonderful things. And th that's really where I think a lot of like, when I say I fancy myself as an artist, that's sort of where that comes in for me. Um, but again, it's really all in focus of creators. I've spent 25 years focused on creators and then of course focused on advertisers, who I also think of creators in some ways um, and on that supply and demand side. And, um, it brings me a ton of joy and I love it. And I'm, I'm uh, psyched to be at Lipson. I've been here for a little over a year now. That's, that's such an awesome background. And I love how you highlighted yourself as an artist and how you use the tools that you've helped create to to help artists. And like you said, yeah, both the publishers you. and the advertisers. That resonates really strongly with me and something that I've done a lot in my career. And uh, like, I just love how you put that because the truth is, is that there are people who can create stuff that's great in front of all these amazing people, but they need that support. They need those tools Absolutely. that make it easier, that help them earn more money. And that's a killer background. I mean, from IMDB all the way up to where you are now, I'm really yeah. excited to see what you're able to do at Libsyn. You've already done a ton, but let's hear a little bit about the vision. I mean, you have a, a very large organization with a lot of <laughs> legacy people and technology, and you have acquired several companies. So Libsyn mm -hmm. today and tomorrow, like who are they looking to serve? Yeah, no, well, I appreciate you asking that. I wanted to sort of just add one thing uh, that you made me think of as you were responding to that. And thank you. I appreciate the, I appreciate the kind words. 
Um, you know, the one thing that I have noticed about the podcast industry, I've been in the podcast industry, well, as a fan for many years, like all the products I have built, I've had sort of podcasts in my ears. Um, so to move into this space is a very natural move for me. And I feel very much at home here. Um, but the one thing that's different about the podcast industry versus digital, whether it be e-commerce or, you know, content websites, uh, like, uh, you know, like movie ticketing or like IMDb, um, is that in those spaces, advertising is just a day-to-day -day normal interaction that people have. Whereas in podcasting, um, you know, there, there's sometimes it's, it's a very precious industry in many ways, which makes it special. Um, but there, there, there is a, uh, less comfort with advertisers. And that's something that I really am focused on in, in, in my presence here at Lipson. And then also, you know, the little voice that I can have in the industry is to say like, these are also artists as well. Like they are doing art as well. And, and, and there is a special relationship between these two things and they don't, it doesn't have to be viewed with as a negative, as a negative part of the ecosystem. And so, um, so either way, I don't know, as you were talking about that, it made yeah. me think of that, that that's something that's always no, but... struck me as, as unique about the podcast industry. And I really want to be able to impart on each, uh, company and person I come in contact with that, you know, advertisers are wonderful. And the right advertising is also wonderful, you know, and, and um, it can it can it can validate a podcast in many ways. You know, you can hear a podcast and think like, oh, it's great content. But if you hear the right advertiser associated with it, just through association, it almost like elevates the podcast itself as well. Um, and I think podcasts yeah. think of it the other way that like it can downgrade the podcast. But that's that's poor targeting or, you know, or poor communication with your audience about what the advertising is. And so, um, so either way, I don't know, just made me think about that as you were, as you were no, no, I like that. And, and just to add on that, I mean, as the industry, as advertising overall has moved in such a direction towards analytics and the hard numbers of it and return on investment and all that, we've lost some of that appeal and like the love of it, right? Like the creative yeah. execution can be so attractive. And in podcasting, the ability to do that really well as an announce read or a host read ad, mm -hmm. the ability to make it as part of like a bigger package for sponsorship there's so much room to flex that yeah in yeah. podcasting compared to all the other areas where it's easier Absolutely. to just throw something quick on facebook and advertise versus making a really cool banner with a landing page yeah. with a killer video asset mm -hmm. podcasting is voice and it's you know we're we're listening to these people yeah. because we trust them and we want to hear more from them yeah 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 so either way yeah thank you for <laughs> thanks for thanks for entertaining me yeah. on that yeah, I appreciate that. No, I love it. Well, let's the the question that I asked was, you know, Libsyn as a big organization with a lot of legacy uh, technology, a lot of legacy people, and mm -hmm. a lot of great acquisitions recently. What's yeah. the future for Lib Libsyn? What's the vision? Who are you looking to serve? Yeah. So, um, so you know, as you well know, and um, I'm assuming many of your listeners know, um, you know, Libsyn is a pioneer in the industry. It's been around since 2004. Um, it has a ton of goodwill in the space. It's a revered host. Um, it's an advocate for, uh, you know, the industry, um, podcasters, and then of course the open ecosystem, you know, the, the name of the company is liberated syndication. Um, you know, I, it, before I knew what the name meant, I sort of thought like, ah, that's a weird name, but like, it's, it's, it's a real flag flying, like salute message in my mind, you know, this idea of liberated syndication, I think is exactly what the industry is supposed to be. And that's what it's always been. And, um, you know, I think there's a lot of value in that for, for, for both, both advertisers, players, um, hosts, podcasters, you know, I think it's a wonderful vision. And so, um, you know, at, at Lipson, you know, our main goal is to be a destination where anyone can join at any point in their career. Um, they can create a podcast, they can grow their audience, they can monetize their content, and they can seamlessly connect um, uh, to hosting with a variety of best in class tools and services. Um, so really what we're moving from is, is I sort of think a traditional like horizontal hosting distribution analytics platform that is very powerful and um, again is a pioneer in the space. But we really want uh, to evolve into a horizontal suite of services. Um, and you know, as we sort of already talked about, the main people we are looking to serve are podcasters. We want them to be able to grow their audience and monetize their content, and also advertisers. We want we want to be able to connect brands to content that is that's meaningful to the brand and helps the brand um, expose what they are through, you know, through the association of content. So, um, so, you know, the main people we're looking to serve again are podcasters and, and advertisers. 
Yeah, and, and Libsyn's history has been really strong on the podcaster side, but with the mm-hmm. acquisition of AdvertiseCast, the mm-hmm. you know the change in leadership overall, addition of you, addition of Brad Turpak, and all these great people there, it's real visible that you guys saw the need and saw the ability to step up on the advertiser side. And so mm-hmm. uh, it's really impressive to see Libsyn, who is so podcaster focused, and I agree with you, has been absolutely a flag flying defender of that side of it get into advertising in a way that's palatable and exciting like you said to convince these podcasters that it's not about a negative and defending yourself against a negative it's about embodying a positive and really growing that relationship with these people that are here to help us fund the growth of our industry yeah and i think um you know the the advertised cast i think we'll probably get into this a little bit more but you know the advertised cast um acquisition has just been incredible for us i mean the team is fantastic the technology is wonderful um the ethos of what they're doing aligns perfectly with the vision of where we're going and so um, we're really proud and um you know and and feel really fortunate about that um, about that acquisition um you know i think also it's about exposing the different types of advertising, right? You know, advertised cast has traditionally been around host red, which is a really valuable format. You know, um, it demands high CPMs. Um, it is very personal. Um, but then we can also use that as a springboard to get more into programmatic advertising. And programmatic advertising has a very valuable place in the ecosystem and in the waterfall of how you monetize. Um, and then, of course, we'll talk about this a little bit more. But then, you know, we're expanding also into subscriptions. Um, so that as someone comes into Libsyn, you know, we want them to be able to be able to help them create a podcast. We want them to, to be able to distribute easily, but then we want to be able to help them monetize. And that monetization doesn't have to be a binary. It's not like, you know, just take ads that we give you or nothing at all, you know, like that's not very exciting. And like, I wouldn't want to be a part of that no. either. You know what I mean? Like, um, I want to know, I want to be able to have these options. So that's something that we're really, really, really excited about, um, you know, well, really excited well, let's well. let's expand further there. I mean, that's, yeah. you know, since you've arrived, your product vision, obviously, you've been here a year. We've seen a lot of really great enhancements. Like you just said there, advertise cast on the host red side of it and even announce mm-hmm. red to a degree. But you mentioned programmatic advertising. You mentioned subscription services. Mm-hmm. How is your product vision kind of forming around these and other tools here? And how are they uh, taking into account the fact that you guys are moving globally now? Yeah, no, that's a it's, a it's a good question, and I'm going to try to unpack it in a linear way um, because we <laughs> really have been very busy. Um, you know, so since 2022, um, you know, our focus has been about developing and integrating services to really realize this suite of services model that that we have. Um, so I really think about it that I arrived in uh, January of 2022. Um, uh, you know, my, my role was effectively sort of organize the teams that we had, figure out where we had gaps, fill those gaps. Um, we have grown tremendously. So, you know, um, uh, try to begin to point us in a cultural direction that we want to go. Um, but on the product side, again, focused on podcasters and focused on advertisers. Um, you know, the first is around programmatic advertising. So, um, you know, programmatic you know, ad tech to make sure that we can dynamically insert ads in a, in a, in a, in a way that um, allows us to access a variety of leading DSPs to be able to match the right ads to the right content and then deliver the highest CPMs in the, in the, in the industry. Um, so that, that has been the main focus of what we're doing. Um, on top of that, that I had mentioned a little bit earlier is around subscriptions. As you know, we own a company called glow.fm. Um, that will continue to uh, run as an agnostic platform the same way that AdvertiseCast.com is going to continue to run as an, adverti- uh, as an agnostic platform. Um, but also integrate that into Lipson so that we can enhance the services that we can provide to Lipson customers. Um, the third is around Studio, which is a recording, um, a recording tool um, that we can talk a little bit more about. Um, uh, the fourth is around a tool called Connect. Um, which is uh, a remote recording collaboration tool. Um, and then the last, uh, which isn't really the last, but I'm sort of speaking to the tent pole items that we're doing, is around websites and domains. Um, that we really want people to be able to create a brand and put that brand underneath a memorable name. Um, and so I sort of did those a little bit out of order because programmatic and advertising 
and subscriptions are the most important thing for us. Again, we do want to help people make money, but we also really want to help people be professional. We think that if we think that one, that people want to be professional, but it's really hard to figure out how to do that. There's just like so many tools and there's so many passwords, you know, like how many passwords do I have to remember, <laughs> you know? And so, yeah. um, so if we look at this sort of linearly, like we've, we've had hosting, but we've attached a studio tool that we'll, we can talk a little bit more about, um, which is recording. Um, we've created a connect tool, which allows for remote, um, uh, remote conversations. Of course, we have hosting and distribution and analytics. Um, we have websites and domains um, for your podcast. We then have advertising once you pick that up and we have that from the host red side and we have that on the programmatic side of things. Um, and then of course, lastly, we have, um, we have subscriptions. So um, in those monetization um, tactics, um, you know, can work for different size podcasts. So um, long answer to a short question, but that's, that's, what, that's what we've been focused on is, is creating that suite of services. I, but I think that that's kind of interesting and, and really neat. I mean, like, look, I've been running Sounds Profitable for two and a half years. Before that, I was in the space for seven years total. But in mm -hmm. those two and a half years, we've seen the rise of these companies that yeah. cover what Libsyn offers in studio, in connect, in subscriptions, in websites. And we're talking in the course of about a year, Libsyn yeah. has launched all of those features because you guys were able to shift your focus on where you were going to grow things. And I assume also because of revenue and success in other areas of the business, you were able to prioritize these features. There are so many options out there. And I think a lot of the industry prioritize just advertising enough that people could kind of catch up and compete and pick apart these features as independent companies instead of just product additions. So it's really exciting to see a solution that offers everything. Now, not every podcast creator, because you guys work with everybody from long tail to, you know, the, some of the biggest names in podcasting is going to use all those features. But the fact that they're there and they're included and it's added value is immense. It means that someone starting can grow their business without having to leave the platform, without having to fill holes that, you know, sometimes we do have in this space because there are companies that are really yeah. good at one thing, but let the rest of it go. I love I love the focus on advertising that overlaps a lot with me, but there are so many times where I have to look at somebody and suggest a platform that fits their exact needs advertising wise, but falls short on everything else. This is really cool. The things that yeah. you're focusing on. And it seems like you have two dedicated sides of the company to build that. Yeah, we do. Um, so, you know, I, I think you're right. You know, the, the ecosystem is full of specialized tools. And I support that. I think that's wonderful. You know, I, I, I am not I am not one of those people that think that it's a winner take all um, model. I think that there's enough for everyone. Um, and I think that everyone has a place in, in what they're doing in the ecosystem. I think that our unique selling proposition is that we can combine all of these things and then we can use data to be able to identify where someone is in their career and help them grow. You know, our job as a company is to serve our customers. And the way that we can serve our customers is we can help them understand um, where they are in their podcasting career and make recommendations about um, services and tools that will help them level up to that next um, that next stage that, that makes them more professional and then offer them the opportunity to be able to make money in ways that fit the sort of DNA of their of their business. Um, but I, you know, I really do believe that, um, you know, IMDB was owned by Amazon. So I sort of grew up drinking that Kool-Aid. Um, and I really believe that, um, that there is great power in having selection. You know, I think selection is a really wonderful thing. Um, and, um, that selection is powerful from a business standpoint, but it's also really powerful from a customer standpoint in that. Um, you know, you can use that selection again to make recommendations and and drive discovery that that you just can't do otherwise when you're a, when you're you know singularly focused on on one service. So um, I think that's our that's 100%. our unique selling proposition. And and I think at a at a very high level, you know, 2022 um, we put the building blocks in place of this suite of services model. And really in 2023, what we're doing is we're chiseling the David out of each one of these and, and making sure that they are in fact, the robust tools that we need them to be. And then most importantly, how we connect them together so that we can make those meaningful recommendations to our customers.
That's great. We touched a little bit on global, and I, I was kind of leading with that one because I know you acquired Julep, and I know that you guys have been digging into Spanish-speaking uh, opportunities lately. So let's mm-hmm. expand a little bit on there. Are these tools just U.S. that you have today, or are they are they in more countries? Yeah, no, it's a, it's a good question. So um, so Julep is Germany's largest um, independent um, uh platform for podcast advertising. Um, it is in Germany, of course, it's in Austria, it's in Switzerland. And then actually just last month we opened in Spain. Um, so it is an entirely unique platform unto itself right now. Um, similar to glow and similar to Lipson studio. Um, we do plan on integrating those at some point. Um, really what we're focused on right now is integrating those teams, um, really focused on how we culturally make sure that we're bringing together all these companies in a way that doesn't make people feel isolated or doesn't make people feel like they're not getting the attention that they need. So we're going to move a little bit slower on that. Um, but it is absolutely in the, um, uh, you know, um, uh, in the vision for us that, um, you know, we absolutely see, you know, the explosion of interest in podcasts internationally. Um, we see the massive growth in listeners outside the U.S. And then, of course, the scalable interest from non-U.S. and U.S. advertisers to reach international audiences. Um, so we have sort of two, a two-pronged approach to that. So the first is, is that here in the U.S., um, we've uh, launched a Latin American uh, Spanish version of Lipson 5, which is our publishing and distribution platform. Um, so that's our approach to reach uh, Spanish-speaking audiences uh, here in the U.S. and then in Latin America. And the second, as you mentioned, is is Julep. And Julep is our, you know, that's where we're planting our flag in Europe um, to be able to expand these services that we've talked about in the U.S. And so the plan is that, you know, when we can ensure that we have the right product parity for our now German, Swiss, Austrian, and Spanish customers, that we will then integrate those into a single platform so that um, so that we can... Um, well, mostly so that we can build one product and, and push it out to everyone rather than support like four products, which is, which is, which is like making me a little bit more gray each time I, each time I look. It's a wonderful <laughs> well, you gray, look good with but it. it's a lot. It they, looks oh, good. Thank, thank you very yeah. much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, um, but, uh, but yeah, so, so that, that is our, our goal is absolutely global. Um, you know, we are focused on ensuring that our U.S. customers get the best service and best products that we can give them. Um, but, you know, like any other business, we're looking to, uh, you know, expand our serviceable, addressable market. And, you know, the U.S. has driven this for a long time, uh, but the U.S. is a small part of a bigger world. And so we're very interested in the rest of the world and, and bringing that service outside our borders. I'm so excited to hear that because the amount of publishers I talked to today that look at their inventory and before it was like 80% US and now it's 70 or 60 Mm -hmm. and they're killing it on these download numbers and the languages in the countries that they're running in are Spanish Mm -hmm. or, and by the way, not exaggerating here, the price sheets that I've seen out of Germany make me want to move and sell someone ads in my podcast. It's astounding what they're able to accomplish here. And so the short of it is, is podcasting is going global. So this Mm -hmm. idea, this belief that the ads should only be in the U.S. or only targeting U.S. people is so short-sighted because Mm -hmm. if you think the affinity for a listener listening to an American podcast where there's tons of competition in English is is like strong and Tom and I have done immense research on this that sounds profitable and happy to like share this with anybody who wants to see it you should see what happens when it gets into a, a foreign language especially when their pool is even smaller those podcasters that are commanding attention there speaking in the local language of that country or that interest group are yeah. able to drive affinity that makes podcast ads in the US which are by far more effective than radio TV and even <laughs> plenty of digital options in those other countries it blows it out of a, out of the water. Totally. It makes the U.S. podcast yeah. look invalid. Yeah, so, totally. It I makes it look so like a lemonade stand. I agree. Right? Like it's it's. <laughs> I mean, it's it's amazing. I mean, that that will normalize over time, of course, right? Sure. Um, but you're right. Like like when we were doing our due diligence across uh, Julep, and then you know we've we we're sort of constantly looking at other companies. Um, it's always something that I sort of think like. Did we add a zero? Is there like an extra zero on that? Like, how did that, <laughs> what's going on there? Yeah. So yeah, it really, it really is astounding. Um, you know, I think the other thing that's really valuable, you know, one of the ways that we can serve, um, you know, our broader sort of team in Germany is that, you know, they are a little bit behind the U.S. in some ways, but they have their own unique 
um, they have their own unique sort of recipe to what's being cooked up there, but it's in a very similar kitchen to what we've done in the US. So like we can yeah. serve them by saying like, hey, this is kind of the way that this is unfolded here. And then understanding like the unique sort of ingredients that you have, like we can help them kind of forecast and build accordingly. Um, but I think that, you know, that 80% going down to 70%, um, you know, I'm old enough now to where um, I'm not I'm not naive enough to recognize that unique industries have unique um, characteristics, but I am wise enough, I would say, hopefully, um, to understand also that there's continuity in business and there's continuity in, in human behavior and there's continuity in media consumption. Right. Um, and so, um, you know, what happened in digital way back in the day is going to happen in podcasting. So that that yes. share of voice is going to continue to come down in the US, not because we're shrinking, but just because the rest of the yeah. world is so much bigger. You know, I just read recently that, um, you know, uh, Apple is making more and more headway internationally um, that, you know, yeah. Android is always owned internationally and they have a massive market share. Um, but that's really good news for us, right? Because it because they really do help the adoption of podcasts. And so, you know, there are all these signals that just say, like, this is absolutely going to happen. And so us, you know, planting our flag in Europe, um, us investing on what we're doing here in the U.S. that we can then share with our international teams, us expanding into Spanish language, you know, all of those things we are we are near certain will be, um, you know, a perfect storm of success for us in the future and, you know, and the industry as a whole. So, yeah, it's really exciting, man. It's like a really. Yeah. Re and again, like I think back when you and I were sitting in L.A. at Podcast Movement, like way back in the day, you just think like, where's the industry going? And it's so cool to be here now to see this happening. So um, it is. It's wonderful yeah. and exciting. And that, and it's it's cool to see that as either an ad agency or a publisher in some of these countries, Spanish language countries or European countries now, mm -hmm. or even smaller developing countries who could come out and reach out to you and collaborate with you. Like there is room for massive companies to exist in these countries that have been barely touched by podcasting yet because it's it, we're already seeing the trends of that growth. Yeah. And it's exciting to see that both sides can be serviced by your tool for that. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah, we're we're very we're very proud and excited, and it's it's fun to build. It's not without its frustration and challenges, <laughs> um, uh, but that's also what what really makes it fun. So yeah, it's it's a it's a it's a great it's a great time. It I feel like it's like a really generic thing to say, but it's a great time to be in podcasting. <laughs> it is. It's like a great time to be in podcasting. So. But it's a good thing to say. And and so we I focus so much on the ad tech here, but like I really do want to highlight the the production side of it, the things that you offer. You mentioned Studio Connect and the subscriptions. So can you talk me through a little bit about these tools, how they came to be and their current version of them? Like what inspired it? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, you know, again, like our vision is that we want to be the suite of services. We want to evolve from just a, uh, not just, but we want to evolve from a hosting distribution analytics platform. Um, you know, Studio, the intention of Studio, Studio is a, uh, is a recording tool. Um, it helps people make and launch um, podcasts easily with guides along the way. Um, but it's really targeted to um, you know, new podcasters, and then also experienced experience podcasters who just want to make it easy. You know, like the podcasters are very good at the topic that they understand. The problem is there's all this technology in between, right? Like you should be able to like click a button and record a podcast. You know, you don't have to be a, a, an audio master to like understand how to do it. But unfortunately, and you know, traditionally you have had to be. Um, so Studio is that tool that um, allows people again to make and launch a podcast very easily. Um, it is, um, uh, you know, it, it, you can record your full podcast. Um, you can do it in sections and then you can auto stitch stuff together. Um, it allows you to create reusable chapters, um, intros, outros, calls to action, and then you can kind of move those sections around very easily. You can stitch in pre-recorded pieces of content. Um, uh, again, you don't need to have any kind of audio mastery to be able to do this. Um, it has auto leveling, equalizing, noise cancellation in the background. So again, the idea is like you should just be able to click a button and talk about left-handed bowling in Ohio because that's like your expertise. You know about left-handed bowling in Ohio, but like I don't know how to record a podcast. So the idea is that I need to be able to like click. I can talk about left-handed bowling in Ohio. My, you know, I can reach my audience out there who's interested in that. 
then I can turn it off. Um, I can do my intro because I don't want to do an intro every time I do a podcast. I have royalty free music that I can add in and I can do like exciting because left handed bowling in Ohio is super exciting. But then there's kind of sad parts about left handed bowling in Ohio, you know, like I can pick like the music that I want. Um, and then I can very easily distribute it um, uh, via via Lipson. Um, it's free with all plans um, at Lipson. Um, so we don't charge That's extra awesome. for it. Um, because again, you know, our goal is that, um, you know, we want to be available and we want to be the destination for the next million podcasters. We love the podcasters who are here right now. They pay our bills. We build for them. We are focused on them every day. I am also very focused on the next million, um, cause the next million are going to get us to the next place where we are in industry. And we want to be able to make that easy for them. And we think that like one click where it's just like, oh my gosh, it works. Like that's technology. Um, and so that's, 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 that's effectively what, um, what studio is. And it's something we're really proud of. It's a, it's a wonderful product. And when is that fully live? I know that the announcement it's fully live now. said that it was coming um, this year. Wow. Okay. Yeah, it's fully live now. So, um, it's in beta and, um, we did the full integration, um, I believe in, I think it was the end of Q4. I'm sorry, we do a lot of products. So um, I believe it was the end of Q4. So. Um, and as you may recall, it was a standalone product for a while. It was an acquisition that we made and we spent a lot of time refining it as a standalone product and running people through it and understanding what people wanted from it before we did the integration. Um, and it's live now. So it's available to all plans within Lipson um, to use and record and you know launch your launch your own podcast or again for experienced podcasters to be able to use just to simplify your process you know like um you know I, it's uh um so it, it's good for both of those both of those audiences that's fantastic and i really do love the emphasis on making it as easy as possible i mean we're very fortunate that sounds profitable that we have gavin who puts together mm -hmm. all of our video and audio content but when you're just starting out being able to use something that levels it takes care of a lot of the the common annoyances because i think it very much follows the 80 20 principle yep. on a lot of that mm -hmm. you know get yourself there get something live and get going um it lets you level up if it's easy to get started it's easy to become an expert right, right? it becomes easier because that barrier to keep going that momentum is easy to build so i love that and yeah. then the the connect tool is about audio and video recording right uh the connect tool is it's it's um it's it's dominantly around around audio um i just wanted to add one last thing you were saying i think that sure. it's also really important to continue encouraging people right and like you can do that through marketing but really the best encouragement is success right like so so part of making that easy is that one we just want people to be able to complete what they want to talk about. And um, I don't know if there's any studies around this, but my guess is, is that the podcasting experts out in the world are far greater than the people who are actually podcasting, right? And if we had some, and actually we're beginning to get some of this sort of data around people who start podcasts, but don't distribute them. But, um, you know, again, a lot of it for us is, is encouraging people um, and doing that through technology so that they can actually succeed and then, you know, then continue. Um, but to answer your question, um, uh, uh, around, um, around connect. Um, so connect is, um, uh, it's a browser based collaboration tool, um, for high quality remote recordings. Um, so, uh, you know, in the example where, you know, I'm doing my podcast and I'm just talking about left-handed bowling in Ohio, but I want to actually interview people in Ohio. I'm in California and I want to interview them. So it's a remote recording tool. Um, it has integrated, uh, multi-track recording, um, which makes it easier for editing and post, right? So like each person has their, has their own track, um, it has continuous sync. Um, which is just provides sort of higher, you know, higher quality. Um, it has a built-in chat system. These are kind of features that we thought about and that people have asked us for. So you can have sidebar conversations like as you're doing your, as you're doing recording. And then um, it's also mobile optimized um, so that, um, you know, so that people can do it on the go. Um, we have found uh, that, you know, for doing this kind of work, um, particularly if you're doing a more sort of professional level podcast, which is really the audience that we want to support, um, that desktop is, you know, desktop is a really important, uh, you know, tool set to be working with. Um, but it is, it is, uh, mobile optimized um, as well. 
I, I think that that's great. I think the ability to be mobile is really powerful. And like you said, as it gets more professional, you want your nice microphone, you want your setup, you want your sound dampened room. But mm-hmm. I'm excited over a world where someone could do something on the field, right? Be able to record that and mm-hmm. have somebody check it while they're recording it live. Um, so many great things that we can do there. And, and our phones are such powerful devices. Yeah. I think we dismiss them a lot in podcasting because it's not as great as having several thousand dollars in equipment and a staff. But like, if you're one person and you can get something meaningful out there, even if it's to 10 people, that can grow. That can yeah. grow into something massive that can be big enough to advertise and could be big enough to be your entire business. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's been it's been a really wonderful tool in the... Um, the you know i sort of i sort of vacillate back and forth between it being um you know a product itself or if in fact it's a it's a feature of um of studio um but in fact it's a standalone product unto itself um that you know we find that a lot of professional podcasters um uh you know of which many of those are lipson customers um that they have their own setup for the way that they record and the way that they um, edit and whatnot, but having connect is a tool that they, that they really love, you know, the feedback has really been tremendous and really encouraging. We spent a lot of time, a lot of time developing this tool. Um, but, uh, but yeah, the feedback so far has been wonderful and exciting. And it's a, it's a, it's another really wonderful way that we can support our customers and, and, um, you know, help again, help them be more, more professional. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I like I like this new version of Libsyn. And I think it's fair to call it that because you've been through so many changes. And but seriously, in the last two years, it's like a whole different company. Yeah, I'm incredibly yeah. impressed by it. That's a totally, um, totally fair statement. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the, the thing that I really want to harp on here for a second is that you're talking about like s- some of these features wouldn't make sense to be standalone. Now, Studio theoretically could be built into API and all these other platforms, but that's just so much work. And we haven't seen anything, anybody do like a standalone version or something like that. There's not a lot of need. A hosting platforms build what their clients need or people migrate to different platforms. So Studio is fine there. But Connect, like you said, it's it's almost standalone. And things like how Advertise Cast and Julep standalone, how you know your subscription offerings, you're gonna have both the internal and external one. Mm-hmm. Is the future of Libsyn going to be, you know, open? Is it going to be, uh, you know, specific to hosting, or do you yeah. think it's going to be this hybrid? Yeah, that's a that's a really that's a really good question. Thank you for asking that. So, um, you know, we are uh, we are focused on on making things easy for our customers. As I mentioned, um, we believe that having a single platform where you can have these suite of services is really powerful for our customers. And I think, you know, where that really comes into focus is that we can use data and personalization to identify what people are looking for, but they don't know. Right. So that sort of goes back to, as I talked about at IMDb, like search recommendations and discovery, right? Like understanding how you can personalize to help people be more, more professional. However, it is in our DNA that we want this open ecosystem and we want to support podcasters in general. Um, we want them to be our customers, but if they're not our customers, they can still use advertise cast. They can host someplace else and they can still use advertise cast. And we're happy to do that. We're going to continue to, we're going to continue to support that. Um, if they want to do subscriptions, but they don't want to be, you know, they're, they're attached to their host for whatever, whatever reason they can use glow FM. Totally fine. Like they can absolutely do that. Um, uh, connect currently is, um, is, uh, uh, specific to Lipson, but we are pretty far down the road in discussions about that. You know, we would like that to potentially be an agnostic solution for people as well. And so um, I think it's a hybrid, you know, it's a hybrid where right now what we are most focused on is getting these integrations in place and getting them working together. But the reason why is that we have a very large customer base and running that many people through those tools, we can iterate very quickly on those products and understand what's working and what's not. And then we can then share that, you know, understanding with the with the agnostic, the hosting agnostic, um, uh, destinations that we have as well. So um, our first and foremost focus is a suite of services, centralized, integrated Lipson, you know, power suite of services. Um, but right behind that is, um, is is the agnostic play as well. I love that. I think that's really powerful. And, you know, like we, like we talked about, Lipson has been around for a while. Like there's no. a lot of people who've started with Lipson in different parts of it and may want to keep different pieces of it in their production cycle. And they might be appealing, uh, some different pieces of it might be more appealing than others, depending on where they are in their career. So knowing that they can still interact with you guys, 
that's really yeah. exciting. And yeah. to, to kind of like tie a bow on that, you know, me and you talked about examples of like the left-handed bowling, right? And, uh, you know, <laughs> someone starting with just 10 or 100 downloads and moving up there. We, I think in podcasting, we kind of generalize and romanticize a lot of that. But Libsyn, having been around for almost 20 years at this point in podcasting, right? Yeah. Uh, can you give us an example of a podcaster that's like, or a podcast that started with Libsyn has grown into like an actual business, someone that we can like really point to as a solution? Yeah. I mean, there, there's so many, um, you know, as you mentioned, Libsyn has been around for 20 years um, and that's a double-edged sword in many ways. Um, but I would say the sharper side of that sword is, is a, is a really beneficial, um, uh, component of the business. Um, so there are just so many of those, um, you know, as I think about those, I guess the, I guess the one that, that, um, comes to mind for me is lore. Um, so lore started with Libsyn when it, when it launched. Um, and as you may be aware, or listeners may be aware, um, lore is this massive brand on its own. Now um, it's, it's become a show on, on Amazon prime. Um, uh, but you know, lore has expanded fully to be distributed exclusively through advertised cast marketplace for host red. Um, uh, and then as we come out of beta for programmatic advertising on Lipson, um, that's going to be a part of its part of its waterfall as well. And so that's been a, you know, I think that's a, um, you know, that's a, that's a very big podcast. Um, but I, I think that's you know, a win. Podcast, yeah, it's a win. Yeah. So I think like smaller podcasters would be like, well, well I'm not lore. Like I, you know, my left hand at bowling in Ohio is never going to be lore, but it, that's, that's not entirely true, right? Like lore is a massive, wonderful success example for us. Um, but you know, I guess the reason that I bring up a really big one is that one, I think people know it, but I think it also just goes to show that like, lore started at one point it didn't start with that many downloads right like it started with no. a single episode it started with aaron having a concept for what he wanted to do and it grew right and he I... was doing you know like like when lore was started you know that was like the you know those were the diy years of of podcasting Very um, much and i so. guess you know to sort of wrap this all up you know the left-handed bowling in ohio that's not a podcast by the way i don't know it's just a weird example of something that's unique but like, <laughs> but like that has to start and then it will find an audience. It's going to start with left-handers and they're going to be like, oh, it's like kind of, and they're going to share it with other left-handers. And they're going to say, then it's going to go to bowlers and be like, hey, check it out. It's like, it's good it's about bowling. Then it's going to go to people in Ohio, right? And then it's going to go to, you know, like, and it has to grow over time. And as it grows, we are very confident and very proud that at Lipson, we have all of these tools to help them grow, to help them get their own website, to help them get their own, get their own domain. Um, to help them record easily, yeah. to help them get advertising. If they only, when they only have like a hundred listeners before they break into, you know, bowling and break into Ohio, they could do subscriptions. And if they sell it to 20 people at two ninety nine a month, that's decent. You know, like you can, that's yeah. a little bit of money. Right. And then when you get up a little bit higher, then you say, oh, you know what, like maybe we're going to do programmatic, right? We can pick our specific categories that we want. So we're not getting, you know, things that are totally random. Um, you know, and then we can like level up to maybe doing host run at some point. And so where Aaron with where, where lore did, you know, a lot of the DIY stuff and has grown with Lipson, we are really confident that we built a platform that, um, you know, that, that, that new podcasts can do the same thing and, and do it, do it a little bit easier so they can focus on their content, you know, even, even more so, which is, which is great. Yeah. About that. Well, I like Laura as a highlight because you're talking about a podcast that has like a TV show, yeah. uh, right. Uh, multiple seasons, um, yeah. that is being able to be serviced by your platform. That's the same as if I wanted to start a podcast right this moment, yes. that same platform can monetize me. That same platform can host and help me edit that same platform can be where I start and where I end at. And I think that that's incredibly valuable. And for the people out there that are concerned about comparing to lore, Aaron did remaster, I believe his first ever episode, and you can listen to the original versus the remaster people come a long way. Like these things weren't hits from day one. They took a lot of effort. They took a lot of growth. It was, you know, right place, right time, but that does not mean uh, that it can't happen again. And, and right. again, yeah. it's very exciting to see that people don't have to like, okay, well, when you get out of the kiddie pool, you have to go to this platform. <laughs> and when you get out of the mid range right. and you're an enterprise business, you have to go to this platform. That's right. The fact that you're building a solution that it comp uh, uh, handles a massive show like lore and someone's first podcast. Yeah. It's really impressive. Yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah. Well, we're, we're really proud of it. And, you know, I think that, 
you know, technology should be a mirror in many ways, right? So like when you go look at Netflix, your version of Netflix is different than mine. And that's the reason you think that it's fantastic. Um, you know, when, 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 uh, when people come to Lipson, we want them to be able to see themselves in Lipson, right? So whether they are at the very beginning or they're, the, they're at the very end, um, uh, you know, very end or they're at the very mature stage rather, um, that, um, you know, that they can see the tools that, that, that satisfy their, the needs that they have at that point in their career. Um, so yeah, so we're 100%. very, we're very excited about it. And, and, and also, you know, mostly again, going back to the name of the company of liberated syndication that like, we want people to feel liberated, right? Like you shouldn't feel like, Oh my God, I've got all this great content, but I don't know how to like get it out there. Right. And then like, I don't know how to like, I don't know how to like create a website because I need to know who my customers are, or I don't know how to monetize because I don't know who to look for. And I'm just like typing in something at Google and I see all these, like, you know, these sponsored links, like, um, so, so we think that we can really liberate people from that and really get them into syndication and get them into, um, um, you know, sharing the, you know, the expertise that they have. Yeah, I, I love it. Well, you know, what's really cool is that uh, Libsyn's going to be joining us for multiple deep dives over the year, right? We have at least three more planned for the rest of the year. This was to kick things off and tell people about Libsyn overall. So, John, to wrap things up here, I'd love to hear from you. What are you working on that you're excited to share? What are we going to see more from Libsyn this year, whether in deep dives or just in general? Yeah, well, um, I mean, I think in, I think in general, you know, again, what we're looking to do is we're looking to ensure that these integrations that we have made this year to create these suite of services, that those integrations are more easily identifiable at whatever stage a podcaster may be in. Um, and the way that we are doing that is through personalization of the of the platform so that when you come onto the platform, we know a lot about you and our 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 um, the value of that is that we can help guide you into the next stage of where you can go in your you know in your podcast journey. Um, so um, I think you'll see a lot of those integrations come into into sharper focus this year. Um, and then also, um, you know, our march towards globalization that we want to take these services out to the rest of the world and um, really introduce all of the power of podcasting to to global audiences. I love it. I'm really, really excited for that global stuff. It's been a big passion of mine, and it means a lot to see such a large company focusing on it, too. Yeah. Well, John, this was fantastic. I'm very excited to continue talking to Libsyn and working with Libsyn over the course of this year and more. So thank you so much for joining me on this deep dive. Yeah, thank you so much. I really appreciate you taking the time. I appreciate the conversation and really appreciate what you do, Brian. Um, I, I say this to you each time I talk to you, but congratulations. And um, thank you for uh, thank you for taking, taking some time out to talk to, talk to Libsyn as well. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a good one.